Okay, so today I want to talk about uh, a technique that I uh, use for some time now in uh, Cinema 4D and Redshift. Uh, and I'm going to also show how to use it in Houdini. Um, so I have um, uh, an object that I, it's actually a, an Alembic cache that I brought from uh, Houdini. Um, and uh, in Houdini, I, I had some attributes uh, that I created on that object or geometry and one of them um, is called bolhas. Uh, bolhas uh, means uh, bubbles in English. It's like a Portuguese word for bubbles. Um, so um, and uh, that um, attribute actually uh, you know like kind of gives a, a number to each individual part of this. It's like the class uh, attribute that comes from the connectivity node. So I can fit it in here in the in the um, shader switch right so what this does is that using this value which is from 0 to 9 um, if I just bring the IPR window here or the render view uh, if it brings um, that value into each one of those parts and and here I can actually grab the value and um, and using the switch, the shader switch, I can give individual colors to those individual parts. So uh, it just goes through the parts and gives it a color depending on the number. Uh, so, and I can also, you know, not only um, connect uh, like a color, put a color here, but I can connect anything, right? I can connect like a ramp um, or, you know, so I just can just come here and uh, oh, I think if I just bring this, you know, I can see that, you know, it connected the ramp in there. It didn't, I don't think it worked perfectly, but um, like circular, yeah, it did, you know, it's the UVs. Uh, so. I can connect anything here and I can even connect the shader. So that's what I want to do. I want to actually connect this uh, shaders to that. Uh, like I can just bring more from here, like nine different shaders and, and, and connect uh, to each individual port. So I can just uh, come here, grab this, uh, all these nodes, paste them here. and uh, connect to shader one, shader zero. Actually, let me connect to shader three or something. Yeah, so there we go. And then I keep, I can keep doing this, right? I can just keep coming here to this one, grab this, put it there and Okay, connect these two. Oh god. To shader six. Okay. And I can I can keep going. Um of course then you know the displacements are left behind, right? So I would need to um these nodes are extremely bad. I should be do, using the, the new ones, uh, honestly. So I can actually create a displacement port here uh, and then you know do the same shader switch again like like this out color to displacement and now add the selector the same same number here and now start connecting all these displacements right okay this is uh, okay but then if I want 20 shaders even with nine i will have a huge um network right it's and it will be really hard to kind of come in and, and change stuff and it will be like very very complicated i could i think create a group here right i can convert to x group and uh i can even close it yeah so yeah it's it's cleaner it's it's nice you know um it's one way of doing it uh, but 
there's a better way. So... I should try this on the new nodes, definitely. Um, right, so what's the other way? It's much better because you can actually drag the shader here. And the shader brings two nodes. Uh, I don't really, you know, know what this one is. It's like a object operator, right? So it's like, I think, reference from something i don't know what it is but it brings this reference node and this reference node can be connected directly into one of the ports as you can see there right and uh in the reference node you can actually select what type of node you have it's like if it's the displacement or the surface so what you can do is now you want the displacement you still have to create to switch nodes, just connect this guy there. Uh, and now copy this. And now you want this to be the displacement. And then just connect it to shader 2. And this guy to displacement. So, uh, so this way you will keep your... And, and some shaders might not even have displacement, right? So this way you will keep your shader uh, tree or shader network really, really clean, right? Because you don't have all those uh, nodes here. So I'm going to delete the, the displacement for now. So And you can keep bringing them. So you just, okay, this is the one. Um, another thing that it's interesting is that you can actually try out, for example, imagine... Uh, just to randomly connect one. Yeah, so it's there on the top. So now you want to try other shaders, right? But you don't want to disconnect this. So imagine, let's imagine that you have, you want, only want to connect these two shaders. And these are the ports that you want to use. Uh, so you can actually bring this reference in here. And then, okay, so now I want actually use this one and now you use this one or just try this one and try this one this is extremely useful um, and very versatile and then if you want to change the shader you just come here you only have your shader in view and you can just start you know, uh, you know doing stuff to it and without all the clutter of having like 10 shaders in the same uh, in the same network um, okay so how do we do this in Houdini it's pretty much the same um, so the only thing is the name of the shader so let's see um, I want to bring um, just one shader here just uh, yeah I have to refresh this thumbnails I was playing around with this. Uh, so I have two shaders here. Now I want to create a new material builder. I'm going to call this main and apply to my objects, so like the, the actual balloons, right? The, uh, the ones that brings that, that attribute called boilish. Um, so Now, uh, this will have a shader switch, not the ray switch. Shader switch here, just connect this there. And now I need to grab um, an integer, which is the boilish this one so let me see if this works just want to make sure 
I don't have my render view running here. Okay, it's working perfectly. Okay, so now uh, the only difference is that I can't drag it, right? Which is a shame. Um, would be great if I could just come here to my materials and just drag them, but I, I can, but then it just jumps into this view. Um, or maybe with control, no, would be nice. But anyway, what you have to do here is to bring the shader merge and do the same. So this is basically the reference node. It just, uh, the only thing that you need to be careful is that if you drag this, it won't work. Okay. Uh, you actually, it's not this that you have to drag, but this, right? So it's actual material that you have to drag in. And, uh, okay, it should be working. Oh yeah, it worked. Uh, I, the only problem is that for some reason, my materials are actually coming in connected to the wrong port. I think this might be something, uh, something to do with the new version of Redshift or something. Uh, so it's like the bump map is called to the connected to, to the opacity. And all the rest is okay, I think, but this is not the one. Okay, now it's working. So yeah, so as you can see, it's very similar to the Cinema 4D one, but you just need this merge and you need to make sure that what you drag into this merge is actually the material. And then you can, if you want to do the, uh, the displacement, you can just, you know, copy this guy, create another switch, um, and now drag the displacement in here. That would work perfectly. Um, and then, of course, plug this one into the displacement. Oops. Uh, okay, that's it. I hope this was helpful and um, see you in the next tutorial.